Okay, so today's uh, activity is around creating an illustrative logo using the design elements and design principles that we've been studying. So this is a little bit of an extension on the task of creating a graffiti, uh, graffiti name in that you're starting to incorporate illustrations into your designs. So we need to start thinking about how we can incorporate design elements and principles not only within a typeface or a typographic logo, but into an illustrative logo, which incorporates um, a, a larger range of opportunities and, and potential for inclusions. For this particular task, uh, I'm going to be doing a circular logo. So, uh, so I'm using a couple of tools which are um, which I've found floating around the house. Uh, one is a mug, which is going to help me draw the initial circle, and the other is a uh, is a can of tomatoes which is going to allow me to draw a smaller circle inside it. Uh, I hope that you have uh, better suited tools for this job but uh, for the purpose of getting the demonstration done we're going to start working with some uh, rather archaic tools. Now I've done a very rough sketch of what I want to achieve which is essentially a circular logo with a handful of scrolls, uh, the, the hypothetical um, brewing company logo that I was planning on doing was a company called Old Brew. I'm not sure whether one of those companies exist or not. Uh, but um, this is more a practical demonstration, so I won't stand on ceremony and I'll, I'll get started. Uh, what, what we will, of course, need is a pencil and a pen in the same way you, you did for the previous assignment. So as I said, we're doing a, uh, a round logo. So the, uh, the primary thing we're going to need to get started with is a circle. So we've got our little circle here. Um, I'm not going to talk you through how to trace around a circle. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you should be in a position to do that. Um, oh, didn't empty my cup properly. There we go. Let's clean that up. And uh, and as I mentioned, I wanted to do a circle inside that. So we're sort of creating a bit of a bit of a donut shape to to get started with our with our work. Now, as per the other logo, I'm going to fast forward through the bits that, um, that are a bit obvious or that um, are more just sort of uh, sitting there staring but looking at me what I'm doing. Uh, so essentially we've, we've got this circle to work within. Uh, I've got a handful of items such as uh, a symbol of hops, which is a, a key ingredient in, in beer, so I sort of thought I might drag that in. I'm trying to create a bit of an old school logo, so that's where the scrolls are coming from. So what I might do is I might just start with, with drawing out. So this is this is a scroll that's going to sit over the top of the of of the logo. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by sketching out that. Now we're gonna follow along what we learned with our blocking with regards to this. In that um, obviously we've we've got our logo and I need to make sure that the type within the logo is going to fit really evenly and smoothly inside this scroll. So I'm going to draw my little guides. Now as I mentioned before the company's name is Old Brew so that's got seven letters in it so which means that we're going to have a central letter so let's let's just draw a rough center line here. I'm just doing this by eye. You can you can certainly use a ruler for, for something like this. Um, so let's go O L B B R B and just always take note of some of the letters which are going to be longer. This in this particular instance the W is going to be longer, so we need to we need to really take note of that and make sure that we've, we've blocked that out. Uh, another thing you probably will have noticed is we skipped a bit of a step um, in that we, we started a step early really uh, with, a, with a typeface logo blocking is the first thing you do. With a logo like this the first thing you want to do is just draw a rough uh, idea of what the, what the surrounds look like. So what I'm going to do is I've got a picture of hops up on my screen that I'm referencing here. So I'm just going to draw roughly where this where this hops is going to go here. And I'm going to use this, uh, I saw a really nice reference where the, the plant kind of creates
creative order. So I'm going to appropriate that in my own style. Uh, I'll be showing you the inspiration as I as I progress through this. So I'm just drawing the hops here and I'm doing most of this by eye because I'm still doing it pretty quickly but you, you sort of want to make sure that the, the hop sort of starts and finishes centrally. Now I've drawn in my, in my design, um, I thought I might just put some extra text on here, just uh, a lot of brewing companies have sort of a, an established date to, to make them look a bit old. Obviously this company is established in 2020 so that's not necessarily something you want to brag about. Uh, but uh, So I'm, I'm drawing that in and, and I'm just going to sort of roughly sketch in a couple of old old barrels because that's that's quite synonymous with, with brewing companies. So just sort of going to pull in a couple of those elements here. And we'll do, um, obviously with the, with the hops, we've sort of got this kind of random tree graphic just to sort of fill in the space a little bit. And then we've got, we'll do like a bit of a, a starburst to represent the sun. Now already you can see with my logo, in terms of design principles, uh, this is a very balanced and symmetrical logo at the moment. So uh, yeah, so that's certainly something you would talk about if you were going to be annotating the the, uh, the design principles, you would, you would be referring to this as a, a balanced logo. Uh, another thing I'm going to be looking at is contrast later on down the track, but uh, the contrast is not necessarily something you can do until you start moving into, into the rendering side of things. So, and I've also, I thought, just, just to add a little bit of detail, uh, I'm going to add this, add, add, uh, add the word mark beer here just to, just, to, um, just to incorporate a bit more detail. The purpose of this assignment is to really just start experimenting with detail and really layering things in. There's a time with logos where you want to have a, a minimal approach. Um, and it's, it's more often than not, to be honest, but, uh, but for the purpose of getting our design skills a bit more refined, uh, I think the opportunity to, to do a more intricate and more detailed logo is really going to help uh, practice, uh, help you practice those, um, those actual drawing skills and the, the technical skills. So just drawing a little, little finish on the scroll here. And um, then we'll draw some lines lines along here and what I might do is I might just do a little sort of scrub element that sits in front of the logo that can just have some, some random fruits on it. I don't really know what, what sort of beer trees look like necessarily. But yes, that's that's given us a little bit of a wireframe as to what we want to achieve. So now it's a case of we'll start populating out the typography. Um, so we've we've blocked our letters in so um, so the, the typeface I'm going to use for something like this is sort of a bit of an old school serif font. I would definitely rec um, recognise that within, um, within the type elements if I was going to be annotating it. So I'm just going to go along here. I might just fast forward this bit for you because it's, uh, it's not really that exciting. Okay, so we've got a we've got a bit of a, an old brew word mark there. Um, this this was all done uh, by eye, but what I'd probably recommend is that if you're going to be sketching it out, make sure that you've got reference to the typography that you're looking to use, or at least some sort of visual references to go off, uh, just so you know roughly what you're trying to achieve before you embark on it. Uh, yeah, get um, get a bit of an idea of what sort of style style font you want. Uh, in order to do that, just jump onto Google and, and have a look at different fonts and see what resonates with your brand. Uh, the reason I'm specifically using a serif font with this is because it's a bit more old school. It's a very traditional looking logo. So we've. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm channeling that a little bit.
Okay, so now it's time to move into the uh, to the to the borrow element where we where we we've got the lines all sorted out. We know exactly what we're trying to achieve, and now it's just a case of fleshing it out with the pen. So in a similar way that we did with the previous assignment, uh, essentially it's just going over these lines. I'm going to fast forward this bit uh, just because it's um yeah, it's it's going to take us all 15 minutes to, to really sort of flesh out these outlines. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. I'm uh, I'm going to wrap this. Uh, wrap this outline in this bit up. Okay, so that's essentially the, the typeface is done. So now it's a case of we'll draw out the scroll, we're going to start feeding in some more details into the outlines. Okay, so we've created the Created the foreground, so we've got a bit of a bit of a circle circle motion going. I've drawn out the, the little hops. I've got got a rough idea of the typography, um, and now we'll quickly feed into the feed in the background. And then what we'll do is we'll start doing things like fattening up some of the lines and incorporating some some textures and some pattern details to to really sort of fill in this and, and give it some some uh, a high degree of detail to make it look like a really intricate illustrative brand. So I'll uh, fast forward this bit as I, as, as I fill in this background area here and, um, and then I'll, uh, I'll start talking again when we start moving into how to fatten up the lines and how to incorporate details and textures. Now something you'll see from the barrels here is that uh, it is still a balanced composition because this barrel on this side, even though there's only one of them, it's much larger. So these two are sort of balanced out and it's not perfectly a, certainly not a symmetrical balance and it's not perfectly balanced, but this, this, uh, this scale of this one in proportion to the scale of these two gives it that visual or optical balance. Okay, so now we've completed this outline, um, we've got we've got a pretty good idea of uh, this is a, a semi-finished sketch. Natural, the natural progression from here would be, of course, to scan this and put it online, and you would go over this in Illustrator to create a really beautiful vector image. But what we're going to be working with now is all traditional styles. So we've we've just got our little viral in hand, so we need to complete the task using this. So. Um, what I'll do now is I'll go through and I'll, I'll fatten up the outlines, and what that's going to do is it's going to create a bit of a bit of clarity around the design, and also I'm going to fatten up the lines around this this central scroll here, and what that's going to do is it's going to create hierarchy because the fat lines give that visual visual or optical weight. It really sort of brings the things that you want to be seen at the front. It brings them to the front and makes them stand out a little bit more. So I'll just go ahead and fatten up some of these lines. So what you would talk about here is you would talk about the line weight that's being used to create a sense of hierarchy. So see how that this scroll now stands out. Uh, it really brings it to the front. So we're going to do this with the with the outside, just to give a bit of definition of the whole shape, and um, and then really sort of start to make this look like a, a really um, refined logo.
Okay, so as you can see, the use of line here is really giving clarity to the overall design. Um, what we're finding is this, this old jewelry typography, which is what we want to stand up to the very, very front, is still quite, uh, it doesn't stand out enough to my liking. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, using contrast to really bring it out to the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the same method that I've used previously. I'm going to start incorporating some patching. So I'm going to use tone to darken the background and make the text look like it's standing out. So uh, I'll, um, I'll get started on that now. Now with your hatching, if you're trying to do hatching over a large space, you need to make sure that you're using a ruler because it's great with only these little lines if you if you practice it. But uh, but yeah, if you start doing it over over a large area and you just start getting these really wonky lines, definitely worthwhile using a ruler. Okay, so that's that's helping bring it forward a little bit. It still doesn't stand out as much as I'd like to, so I might um. I might look at just sort of adding a little bit more shading just to create more starker contrast between the, the background and this layer sort of they're coming to the foreground. So um, I'll get started on that now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's, um, for the sake of expediting this bit, it's a bit like a, a bit of a scribble shading where you sort of, you're just creating these like little sort of circles. You can, you can usually get away with this with with cross hatching, it looks a bit raggedy if you're doing it with um, without without not over the top of cross hatching, but you're just doing little little sort of curly circles just to almost give it a bit of a drop shadow. So just doing heaps and heaps of little circles. If you do the scribble shading. Um, not on the cross hatch, it gives it a gives it kind of a cool grungy effect. So if that's what you're trying to achieve, then definitely um, definitely start experimenting with it because it it just sort of makes it look quite rough and rough and ready. And, and sometimes that's the sort of effect that you want to achieve. So I'm just adding a bit of scribbling here to the to the corners. Just to just to give it a bit of a kind of a fade effect here, so that's that's starting to come together. So what I'll do now is I'm going to start feeding in a little bit more detail. Um, I'm going to add a add a little bit of detail in the um, in the form of some some line based textures into these pops. I'm going to start shading in these barrels again, just using some cross hatching techniques. I'm going to start using some cross hatching for the for the scrub here. And, uh, and I might just use some um, outward pointing lines to create this sort of dynamic uh, sunset, which uh, the, the lines in that instance are going to be used to really draw your eye into the centre of the image because they're all going to be pointing, pointing to this bright sort of inward shape. So I'm going to get started on, uh, I'll get started on int introducing some detail into the hops over here and then I'll start moving on to, on to shading and hatching the central area. Okay, so I've incorporated the hops here, and I might just move on to the onto the hatching effect. Now, what I'm sort of finding is that as I'm, as I'm adding more detail, um, we're losing a bit of contrast because everything's there's so much detail in all of the places that it starts to just blur into each other. So I'm going to need to start using some fat lines in places so that I can bring the the core or the bigger elements uh, forward from the ground elements. So that's where I start talking about the use of line and hierarchy to emphasize the bigger ground. So uh, I'll get started on that now by fattening up some of these lines. Okay, 
Okay, so think about just fattening up those arms. This back is really, really sort of rooting to the front, just that, that bit more. Um, so I'm going to show you this, this sort of circle area here too again, because I'm just going to use contrast and tone through hatching to bring the figure away from the ground. So we're trying to make the ground nice and light, and the figure is going to be darker and deeper and thicker line weights so that it, it comes forward and pops out again. Just gonna just sketch out a bit of a shadow here, just to just to give it a bit of bit of definition. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to come together, and uh, following along with this um, with this whole contrast narrative to sort of start darkening up the front. So I'll need to probably start incorporating some of those darker tones into these, these two scrolls here. Um, so I'm going to do that now, and that's hopefully is going to, again, just creating that contrast to bring the figure to the front and, and sort of push the ground back a bit. Generally speaking, your figure is, um, is the lighter colour because lighter colours generally um, stand out against darker colours. I'm, I'm sort of doing the reverse here. Uh, it's breaking the rule a little bit, but in the same regard, uh, these rules aren't hard and fast. They're more just guides to, um, to, to help you along the way. But um, if you're consciously um, using, using the rules in a different way, there's, there's nothing wrong or illegal about that. So just as long as you're conscious of, uh, of what the rules are, so you can, you can go ahead and break them. Just going ahead and colouring in this twenty twenty now. Okay, so that's starting to come together. We've got a bit of a bit of a label going. So now I'm sort of finding um, something needs to sort of bring it all together. So I'm going to put a bit of a light stroke around the outside of it uh, before I go any further. That's this is a this is a bit of a design decision that I've come up with. Um, on the fly, as I'm seeing it progress, I've decided this is something I might just want to do just to sort of um, just to bring it all in a bit more. Okay, so I think that's been a really good way to sort of to just sort of um, just close in the logo just that little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start feeding the detail into the into the ground. So I've fairly well finished the figure. I'm going to do a few little refinements to that that I'm kind of spotting as I'm looking at it. So with the ground, I want to make sure that I don't go over the top with colouring in because I really want to create that contrast, as I was saying, with the, with the darker figure sort of standing towards the front and the ground kind of pushing back with a little less detail. So I'll get started on that now. So I'm going to use a, a more sparser hatching technique for the, for the shrubs which go over the top. Just going to use vertical, not to get into too much detail, but generally vertical and horizontal stripes draw a little bit less attention to the diagonal ones because they're they're not quite as dynamic. They're not uh, they're not necessarily action. They sort of sit more uh, statically, and I'll start drawing these. This is just using that pen clipping technique just to get the lines just a bit thinner as they sort of go towards this, this central point. Now for the scrub in the front, uh, I might just use the same sort of broad, wide hatching technique that I've used for the rear here because I don't want this to stand out too much. I still want this bit to be in the ground. So there we have it. Um, 
I'm going to just do a few more refinements, just add a little bit of shape to these barrels here, because uh, I think that the barrels could probably sit in the figure as well. I think that they're, they're probably, uh, we could probably darken them up and make them kind of sit on par with this with this scroll. I feel like this, this beer is a little bit flat, so I'm going to try and sort of add a little bit of shading to kind of make it pop to create some form in the scrolls. And, uh, and then I think we're fairly well done. Just using that scribble shading that I was using before. Again, you can get away with it much easier if you're, uh, if you're doing that with the top of the hatching because it's, it can look quite messy if you're just doing it without hatching. Okay, so there we have completed it. Um, this, is, this is a bit of an example of how you would create an illustrative logo using just a pencil and a pen. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, probably at pre-rendering stage, that's when you probably want to be looking at scanning it in and using Illustrator to create a vector version of a logo. Uh, in, in a professional practice, that's certainly what you would do, but, uh, but in this instance, you could, particularly with an illustrative logo that's designed to kind of look like it was, was hand-drawn, there's nothing wrong with hand drawing it. You could you could certainly keep going with this, but you would need to be aware that uh, if you were using it in professional practice, that at some stage you're going to need to uh, need to make it digital. So um, so you you probably do that sooner rather than later in the, in the design process. Uh, if I was going to to talk about this in terms of design principles, I would certainly use the um, use figure ground. I would definitely be talking about how I. How I've used darker, thicker lines to bring a figure to the forefront, and I've used less detail and lighter colours, uh, lighter shading to, to bring the ground to the background. I would talk about contrast largely as well. I would talk about how the how the the particularly the, the type, the design element of type, has been um, reversed uh, white against the, the darker black. Uh, to, to create a contrast to make the to make the lettering stand out a little bit. Um, I would certainly, in terms of design elements, I would talk about line, uh, the, the thickness of the line again, um, and that lead, lends itself to the design principle of hierarchy. The the line sort of allows for that hierarchy to take place. That you you've got these fatter lines which really sort of emphasise the the key elements that we want to to keep draw people's attention to. Um, yeah, you would. Um, yeah, you would. You would use. Uh, you would use the design element if you were annotating a tone. Uh, hatching and the scribble method has been used to create tone throughout the throughout the design. Uh, you would talk about the design element of type that uh, the, the design has used a serif font because it's it's trying to convey that traditional type feel. Um, there's a number of different design elements that you probably talk about uh, with regards to annotating this. So maybe in the next session we might go through a bit of a bit of an idea of how we would create, a, say, a 200 word annotation for a design like this. Well, thanks very much. I hope you got uh, got plenty from that, and um, I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. <laughs>